Now does it work? Okay. Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Second one is John 1, 10 through 12. 10 through 13. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Next one's First John. Three, one through three. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself. First Timothy three, one through seven. It's getting warm up here. (laughs) First Timothy three, one through seven. There is a trustworthy saying if anyone sets his heart on being an an overseer, he desires a noble task. Now the overseer must be above reproach, the husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. (laughs) If anyone does not know him to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders, so that he will not fall into disgrace, into the devil's trap. And we have Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. through four. Good thing she's here, huh? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instructions of the Lord. And the last one is Ephesians four twenty nine through 32. Do not let any unwholesome talks come out of your mouth, 
but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, and that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve with the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Hi. Lord Jesus, there was some reason you wanted me to do this. And I just asked for your help. I asked for the strength and the clearness of mind that I might be able to say what you've put on my heart. Just quiet my back, pray. Open our eyes and our hearts and our minds to your truth. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to talk to you about families today. I don't know what you think when you think of that word. But I know what I'm thinking now, and I'll tell you about it. How's that? I believe that it was God's idea. That it is God's idea. He planned it, made it possible, and he's not given up. Because he knows it is the truth. Now I want to talk about families in three areas. I want to talk about the family of God... Behold what manner of love the Father hath given unto us that we're now the children of God. And that's a worldwide family. That's a family made up of everyone who has trusted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Amen? And there's a bunch in that family. And there are more being added to it every day. There are places in Africa where it's incredible the number of people that are coming to Jesus every day. So we want to think about family as concerning God's family in all the world. Okay? That's the first family. The next family I want to talk to you about is the family that we find in Churches, little parts of that big family. And they're scattered all over the world. And uh, here we are, we're one of them. (laughs) And then I want to talk to you about The families that live in the house, made up of a mommy and a daddy and their children, okay? 
Now, this message is not about salvation. This message is about how to live in a family. You get into the family of God. You get into this family by accepting the Lord Jesus as your Savior. By putting faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Okay, now you find yourself in the family of God. That's taken care of. Seriously. Jesus died on the cross to pay for every one of my sins. And now sin no longer has power over me. I may commit sin. But I can confess sin and find my sin forgiven. Hallelujah. End of subject. Now let's move into family. Interestingly enough, if you approach the word of God with the idea of how do I get along in my family, you'll find verse after verse after verse. Mark read a bunch of them, and I just picked a few. The Lord is very interested in teaching you, teaching me, how to get along in our family. Whether it be in our house, or whether it be in our church, or whether it be in our nation. Now, interestingly enough, what we need to get along in our families has to be learned. Has to be learned. People think, I think, people think that... uh, if they accept Christ as their Savior, that they have their ticket to heaven, and they don't have anything to learn. And they go home and their wife does some weird thing or he does some weird thing and they cuss each other out and go down the road and think nothing of it. Excuse me? You ain't learned nothing yet, honey. It starts raising children. When a man and a wife get married, and they think on having kids, they better put this in their little handbag. The instructions on raising children. And there are plenty in the Bible. That's one of the biggest reasons he gave it to us. That'll tell you just exactly what you need to train your child to do. Now, when I say train, I mean change behavior. And we're talking about about something that's so important that you can't believe it. When When I used to teach school... We didn't have to go by the state-dictated curriculum. I don't see any... Bob, you're the one? Oh, you're sitting up there. There's two or three of you guys here. No, I could walk into that 7th grade classroom and teach any kind of science I wanted to. So we would just pick out a bunch of subjects in the area of science and decide how much we'd spend time with each one and figure it out that way and go through the year. And typically, we'd pick a couple, three weeks per subject, and down we'd go. Well, the first subject we'd take is uh, animals. Kids love animals. I even know some adults that love animals. Well, you had to bring this animal to school. You had to weigh this animal. had to feed this animal. It had to provide to this animal a habitat that would be healthy for it. And once you made your choice of animal, then you needed to look all that up 
and write it in a paper for me. And I had to agree to it. And then you could bring that animal to school. So by the end of the first week, or maybe a little longer, I'd have 90-some animals in my classroom. And when a chipmunk would get loose, we would have a wild time in there. I can't believe it when I go down the road and I look over there and there a horse is in a little dinky shed with an iron fence out front about 12 by 12 and that's where they keep that house, that horse. Is that an environment for a horse? I don't think so. Well, what about our environment? Well, who cares about that? Well, you better. You happen to be the person that's living in it. What kind of an environment do you want to live in? I say that to married couples, but I'm marrying them. I'm marrying them. What kind of a house are you going to have? What kind of a home are you going to have? What's it going to be like in there? Have you learned enough so that you can make that sucker work? Or are you still guessing whether it'll work or not? You don't, you don't need to guess. It takes us a long time. I'm a good example. But you can learn what makes it work. And boy, I'll tell you something. When you find out what makes it work, it just tickles your pig. You're so excited to go home. You're so excited to spend time with your wife. One of the things I like to do best is lean on the partition between the kitchen and the living room there and just watch your work. Help put things on the table. and I don't help do much. My attention is about the best thing I can give her these days. But you know what? There's nobody screaming in our house. There's nobody going to bed mad at our house. There's nobody saying things that they wish they hadn't said at our house. You know why? I have finally learned that you don't have to do that. <laughs> All you have to do, we read it in the last scripture. Don't let any unwholesome words come out of your mouth. Keep your mouth shut unless you can say something nice, encouraging. And helpful. End of subject. There isn't anything else you need to say. You might think you do, but you don't. Now, I'm just talking about man and wife. What about children? We watched a movie last night where a teenage boy shot his dad. Killed him. Why did he do that? Something wrong with the environment. May I suggest to you I think what you read about in the paper today and what you hear about on TV today all comes from not the right environment. And people come out of that, whatever it is, 
so upset, they do illogical things. Mom and dad, raising children is your job. Making a living is a piece of cake. Anybody can go get a job. All you got to do is want to work. But when it comes to raising Benjamin, they got a job. (laughs) A lot more than just making money. Children should be your crown and joy. Children should be something you're more proud of than anything else. Now, don't get me wrong. I realize we live in a world, and we live in a place where there's all kinds of attraction, and we can live in, and we, we, we can have a lot of things to contend with here. Now, that's true. We can't solve all the answers. We can't give all the answers. But I'll tell you one thing. A lot more can be done than is being done in this area today. Mamas don't stay home. I'm not picking on them. I'm saying that I'm sorry. If you're going to make that child the thing, it's more important than making that extra money. I happen to know, and I'll challenge anybody here, that you have to go make that money or you can't live. When Bonnie and I were first married, we didn't have a job for years. We ate three meals a day. Got along just fine. You know why? Because the Lord has ways of supplying what you need. And you can sit there and laugh at me all you want to, but until you've tried it, you don't know. Now, I'm not saying about being lazy. We did everything we could. We work right now. Anything you can see to do, you need to do. But the focus, the priority has to be the child. And for them to grow up hating their parent, something's wrong with the environment. Who made that pen for that pony? Somebody that didn't know squat about what that child needs. (laughs) And then we come to churches. If there are two churches in a town, they're in competition. You know that? Sometimes preachers will have breakfast together every week. And typically when they do, they'll say, Hi, George, how many did you have Sunday? Oh, I had more than you did. (laughs) What? What is that all about? Oh, I know. I'm one. (laughs) You think how many people aren't here or are here on Sunday morning makes any difference with me? Sure it does. But praise God, I try to not let it any enter into my Ego. Because I think, I continue to try to realize it isn't my church. It's God's church. And he brings here who he wants. End of subject. And the sooner I get tickled about that, the happier I am. We have a ministerial association, ministerial association in this town. 
And there are months and months and months and months when just three or four preachers will show up. What are the rest of them doing? Their own thing. <laughs> I was there for years. I know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> See, I've, had, I've walked through this muck. And the Lord finally convinced me that instead of being in competition, and I could just start naming them, I need to just love them. They're my brothers. Why can't I smile when I see them? Why can't I cry when they have a wreck and destroy their feet? Why can't we sense the need? Why can't we sense what well, maybe we could do to help? The de- devil has got his nose in this country to the degree that there's all kinds of people right here in this community that are believers, read the Bible, pray, will share with you, But will he go to church? Why? We know how those people act in church. How does that fit? (laughs) Who are you? What kind of an environment do you make this? Doesn't that make, make sense? Makes sense to me. And you know what? God has not given up. He continues to love and to cherish you. Because you see, the whole thing in this family thing that I've talking to you, that I've spoken to you about, comes from his love. God is love. And he loves you. He even loves the world when it hates him. But we aren't talking about that this morning. We're talking about how does he love the church? He loves it so much. Jesus gave his life for the church. He loves it so much. He does not give up. He continues to just shovel out love. Via the Holy Spirit that's in our hearts and asks us to receive it. Will you love? Will you love me? Oh, I love you, Lord. Will you love your wife? And that means not emotion. That's okay. It means behavior. That's where loving wives and loving husbands come to play. How do you treat her? How do you treat him? Do you love your kids? I hear parents say that to their children all the time. And I've watched long enough to know that they didn't mean one part of it. Because they sure don't act like it. So then the words have no meaning. But you know what? It doesn't make any difference. God still loves you. Isn't that neat? We have seven children. Not all of them are walking with God like I would like to see them walk with God. But that's my problem. Their walk with God is their problem. I kind of encourage them when I can, when I think about it. Isn't it great that God has this great plan for the family? I'm glad he doesn't ask me to stay in little shed with a 12 by 12 pen. He 
He came down and saved my soul and set me free. And I can range until I want to sit under a shade tree and get my breath. Hallelujah! Let's praise His name for what He's done for us and where we can go and how we can change and how we can learn and how we can help. Amen? Amen. Well, there's every word of prayer, then I'm going to ask Benjamin Hester to bring his family up front. Okay? Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of sharing these truths. And I ask you by your spirit to affirm them, if indeed they are true. I believe they are. I think your word attests to that. And I ask that if they indeed are true, that you would help all of us, Lord, to train to change, to be transformed into that which is pleasing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Benjamin, front and forward, please.